Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is All Things Mac. We constantly upload contents relating to the Mac products. So if you are new to this channel, kindly hit the like and subscribe button to help us create more contents. If you already own or intend to own a MacBook at any point in the future, do yourself a favor and watch this entire video from start to finish. I'm going to tell you exactly how to care for the battery in your MacBook, how often you should charge it, what are some best practices, and should you unplug it when you're not using it. This video is based entirely off official Apple documentation, respected sources, and my own personal experience of using MacBooks. I'll try to reference sources throughout the video where possible. I wanted to start off by mentioning that there's a lot of information out there on this topic, and a lot of it is quite outdated. Battery technology and its supporting software, for example, Makos, has changed a lot over the last decade. Let's start with discussing the battery on your MacBook and the technology behind it. Traditionally, MacBooks use lithium-ion shortened to Li-ion batteries. Yes, some of the newer MacBooks use a lithium polymer or Li-poly battery, but for the purpose of this video, the difference between them is minimal. A lithium-ion battery consists of, one, the anode and the cathode, two, a separator between the two electrodes, and three, an electrolyte that fills the remaining space of the battery. The anode and cathode are capable of storing lithium ion. Energy isn't released as lithium ions travel between these electrodes through the electrolyte. The way these batteries discharge is by lithium ions moving from the anode to the cathode through the electrolyte or vice versa to charge. In an ideal world, a ion battery likes to stay at 50 charge. This results in an even distribution of lithium ions between the anode and cathode. Keeping a battery at 100 charge all the time puts stress on the cathode. Think of it like a seesaw. You, you want it to stay relatively balanced and not tip either side too much. Now, every time these lithium ions move back and forth, the battery loses a very tiny percentage of its total capacity. There's something called a charge cycle, which helps explain this process. You complete one charge cycle when you've used or discharged an amount that equals 100 of your battery's capacity. A charge cycle can take several days to complete. For example, you might use 50 of your battery's capacity one day, then recharge it fully overnight. If you do the same thing the next day, you will have discharged a total of 100 or one full charge cycle. If you have one of the new Moan MacBooks, you would know that the battery life on them is incredible. For me personally, with about six to eight hours of use per day, I can get over two days of runtime from a single charge or one full charge cycle every two to three days. It's common knowledge that lithium ion batteries are consumable products. That is, they will be consumed slowly with day-to-day -day use and degrade over the MacBook lithium ion batteries are rated at a thousand charge cycles. According to Apple, at some point soon after 1,000 cycles, the battery will only charge to 80 of capacity. This doesn't mean it will magically fail or burst into flames. Just that, instead of 16 hours on average for the Mon MacBooks, you'll get somewhere around 13 hours instead. If I continue to use my Mon MacBook Air like I do now or one full charge cycle every two days, I'd be looking at potentially 2,000 days until I reach that 1,000 charge cycle rating. 2,000 days is five and a half years of using my MacBook for six to eight hours every day. Now, there are other things that contribute to battery longevity, such as temperature and aging, but charge cycles are typically the main factor. By the way, you can check how many charge cycles your MacBook has by clicking on the Apple logo in the top left corner, clicking about this Mac system report, and selecting the power option. Now that we know some of the science behind lithium ion batteries and that they are consumable products, what are some ways you can keep your battery healthy? One of the biggest contributors to poor battery health is heat. You want your battery to be in a relatively cool environment wherever possible. This means you should avoid using your MacBook in hot environments like outside in direct sunlight for extended periods of time. Please don't be like me. This includes keeping your MacBook in a hot car or letting your MacBook Pro render while sitting on your bed and not getting proper ventilation, for example. Remember that liquid electrolyte inside the battery. High temperatures will cause those electrolytes to break down, causing accelerated degradation regardless of how many charge cycles the battery is at. If you live in a naturally hot environment like Australia or India, there's not much you can do. But unless inside ambient temperatures are insanely hot, like 35 to 40 degrees Celsius, you'll probably be fine. You can use a stand if you like to introduce a bit of airflow around the base of the MacBook. I've linked my favorite one down in the description. Also, 
don't be afraid to do rendering or similar activities that cause CPU or GPU to heat up. As I've demonstrated previously, most of the heat dissipates into the top center half of the chassis and doesn't heat up the battery too much. What about leaving your MacBook plugged into the charger? Before I get into this, let's talk about the charger itself. I always recommend to use the official Apple charger wherever possible. The main reason for this recommendation is there are a lot of dodgy chargers out there that should be avoided. Often, they are the same cheaply mass-produced charger, simply rebranded by random Chinese companies. That being said, there's no harm in using chargers or pass-through USB-C. Charging from things like docks or monitors, provided they are from a good and trustworthy brand. Some examples include Dell, Logitech, Caldigit, or Anka. If you're really cautious about this, you and look for brands and accessories on the official Apple Store as a good starting point. I will leave the small USB-C dongle charging hubs up for negotiation for short periods of time. And when using a dongle from a high quality brand, I think it's okay. If you've got a permanent desk set up, however, I would go with a proper docking station or monitor or just use the official Apple charger. Next, Apple has become very good at keeping MacBook batteries healthy via the use of software. Makos has had several huge updates recently, a major one being the way it interacts with the battery. This is why I always recommend keeping your MacBook updated. The feature is called Battery Health Management, and in a nutshell, Makos tries to charge the battery to 80 quickly and the remaining 20 charges much slower, also known as a trickle charge. Once the battery reaches 100, the charging stops and your MacBook will run mainly from the power adapter bypassing the battery. Furthermore, Makos will let the battery drain slightly even when it's plugged into the charger. This is to ensure the Mac is not at 100 capacity constantly, which is not good for battery longevity. Every now and then, it will top up the battery. If you tend to use your MacBook at certain times and lengths during the day, Makos will recognize this and keep the battery charged accordingly. For example, if you tend to work at your desk from 9.0 M to 5.0 all p.m. with your charger plugged in and then switch to your battery for a few hours at night, Makos will keep your charge at around 80 during the day while plugged into the charger and will top up the battery a short while before you leave your desk. It will anticipate based on your usage pattern when you are most likely to use the battery. You can actually see this particular setting in the System Preferences menu under Battery. Just make sure checkbox is ticked. It is by default. So what about the common advice of calibrating your battery by letting it drain to zero and then charging it fully? Well, that's no longer accurate for modern MacBooks. In fact, letting the battery drain to zero A is not something you should ever do, just like keeping the battery charged at 100 at all times. Even then, although Makos might display the battery as being 100 charged, the reality is that it's likely only 90 or 95 charged. There's a buffer built in to prevent overcharging. Also, if you're going to be storing your MacBook for several weeks or months without using it, charge the battery to fit. Let's move on to the question you are probably here for, and that is, should you leave your MacBook plugged into its charger? My personal opinion is, it depends. If you use your MacBook for long, continuous periods of time, such as for work or school, it's totally fine to keep it plugged into your charger the entire time you're using it. Like I said previously, Makos does a really good job now of intelligently charging so as to minimize stress on the battery, even while plugged in. Also, leaving it plugged in while you work for long periods of time will also result in fewer battery cycles, potentially prolonging the life of the battery. That being said, I'd still recommend against leaving your MacBook plugged into its charger 20 fote and never actually draining the battery. At the end of the day, it's a laptop. Use it like a laptop. Let the battery drain down to 15 or 10 every now and then, even if you only use the MacBook at a desk. If you're putting your MacBook to sleep or shutting it down at the end of the day, simply unplug the charging cable each night. Don't be afraid to drain the battery and feel like you need to be attached to the PowerPoint the entire time. Yes, it's generally accepted that the best way of prolonging battery health is to keep the charge between 20 and 80 and only charging in bursts. But in practice, this is very difficult too. If your existing routine doesn't allow for it, if you're traveling to school and need a full charge or you're working at a desk all day, just don't worry about it. It won't make a huge difference. Like I said before, if you're using your MacBook all day at a desk, just keep it plugged in. Makos will do all the optimizing for you 
If you use your MacBook all day at school on battery power and can't charge it in bursts, that's fine too. If you mainly use your laptop on battery power for a few hours here and there, charge it for 15 to 20 minutes every now and then. If you have easy access to a charger, for example, when you cook dinner or have a shower, if you know you'll be away from a charger the next day, charge it to 100 the night before. This is how a lot of people, including myself, use their laptops and naturally, the charge will stay mostly between 20 and 80, with no extra effort on the user's part. That being said, you'd be surprised at how little the difference in battery health is between users who simply keep their MacBooks plugged in the entire time versus those who perfectly time every charge and percentage drain. Is all that extra work over a few years worth a few more percentage points of battery health? I don't think so. I know there are apps out there such as All Dente that claim to limit the charge to 80 and whatnot, but I personally would prefer to let Mako's have control over my battery and not some random third-party app. All it takes is one wrong setting or a botched update from the developer and you might be worse off. At the end of the day, a laptop is a tool. Use it as a tool. You don't want to spend all day stressing over when you should unplug the charger or panicking. If you see the battery at 100 for too long, the vast majority of people upgrade their laptops every three to five years. And I can confidently say that in 90, 90 of cases, your battery will last that entire time without issue. If you plan on keeping your MacBook longer than that, sure, you can be slightly more cautious, but worst case scenario, Apple offers battery replacements for about $150. But like I demonstrated in this video, your battery will more than likely last five to 10 years before it degrades enough that a replacement is necessary. And by that point, it's probably time for a new MacBook. Technology and software is at a point now where we can mostly sit back and not worry about the things we used to worry about five or 10 years ago. And your MacBook's battery is one of them. That will be all for today's video. If you like our contents here, please do well to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to get updated when we drop new contents. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay on edge. Bye.